Amsterdam Kitchen. Join us live on Saturday mornings from 10 till 12 on Broadcast Amsterdam. Or catch up later. It's all online. Good morning, Amsterdam. Good morning. So, welcome to Broadcast Amsterdam to Flores de Mayer. Hi ladies, thank you for having me. I'm uh, really excited to be here. Yeah, and uh, obviously you're now running your wine guy. Uh, what is your wine guy? Um, your wine guy is, well, it started from a, from a passion for wine. I've had a passion from, for wine from a, from a young age. Yeah. Um, and it sort of, uh, it started uh, about two years ago. The idea back then was poor decisions. Wait, wait, wait. I have to backtrack. When you say it started at a young age, are we talking like French young age, like 13 like, or 14? Like 15, 16. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, and it, it started because, um, so my mom was doing a little wine tasting class course herself. And uh, she had six wines lined up next to each other. And I was just, she was like, do you want to smell and have a little taste? And I was like, and the most peculiar thing, what grabbed my attention then was sort of how you have six different wines and how each wine, there's different smells, there's different flavors. And that's sort of what sparked it. I mean, from a young age, I've also loved to cook. So I've loved flavors. I've loved aromas and all of those things as well. So, hats off to Mrs. DeMeyer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Yeah, yeah, a really formative experience. And, yeah. and uh, clearly it's stuck with you, and now you're turning it into your career. Yeah. Um, so, uh, now you come to us through uh, our friends Capri- the, uh, at the Capriccio Cafe, um, and you're working in collaboration with them. Uh, so, yeah. how, how did that get started? How do you know them? Um, so, I know um, Aaron, I met through um, uh, three years ago. I was working at a restaurant called Cafe de Paris on the Rokin. Um, I was front of house. I did management. He was in the kitchen. And ever since then, sort of a friendship uh, blossomed. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, uh, he also shares a, a passion for cooking, wine, and all the great things in life. Um, and then uh, we came together a few, uh, this was, you know, as uh, Corona was happening, we were sort of like, hey, let's um, put our heads together and figure out, again, ways to get wine into the hands of more people. And that's Ooh. sort of what... what, what but that's, <laughs> Crucial that's, service. <laughs> that's both what your wine guy is and Capriccio Wine Club and what the whole, sort of it all encompasses. It's sort of the way I look, uh, you know, wine can be something which can be immensely complex, or what we what we like to focus on, just make it simple. To strip away all the the frills, the Bourgognes, the Bordeaux, all the fancy things. Is you know those are great wines, but sort of at the end of the day, what matters most is what's in the bottle, what's in the glass, what do you smell, and what do you taste. Um, and by exploring mm. by exploring that, you sort of discover okay, what do I like and what do I not like, because it's very difficult to walk into. I don't want to say difficult, but if you, if you're a novice, then where do you start? Mm. You, you and by you know by doing both my at home tastings, um, if you would like to have a wine tasting party, I come to your house and I facilitate that. I work together. I always like to. Per, the, my key thing is especially your. I like to think. I like to make things personal, so I don't just pick six wines. I come to your house and we taste mm. those. I also explore. Hey, what do you like? What bites might you put out for your guests? And that way. I ensure that it's both informative, it's fun, it's educational, but it's not too heavy either. Mm. You know, just uh, lowering the threshold and most of all, just having a fun experience. Yeah. And so you really, um, sorry, you, you really, uh, I'm just wondering how much information have you got to go on with your clients? Uh, like, you, the, I guess your first interaction is possibly uh, an email. Yeah. Uh, you're not necessarily meeting them face to face or no. talking to them. Yeah. So you've got to glean some, you know, decent amount of information from very limited resource to, in order to make the decisions you're making about the wine that you're going to supply. Yeah. Any tricks there? How do you do that? Um, I find out I, the main thing, it's sort of, again, flavor and aromas. It's sort of, I like, what do you like to cook? Um, do you like, I mean, it, if somebody's going to want to do a tasting, they're already going to have a bit of an occasion of what they like and don't like. Mm-hmm. Using that information, so it's sort of, you know, do they like really heavy oaked Chardonnays? Do they like a fruity, fresh Pinot Noir? Um, do they like a really bold Malbec? And I'll ask those few, you know, with a few questions and I'll I try to guide them. I try to very quickly figure out, okay, what kind of flavor profile might they have? What kind of guests are they going to have? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then based on that information, yeah. I just sort of, I make a selection. 
Yeah, and are you ever trying to throw them a curveball? <laughs> always, always, always. One of my, uh, a while ago, I did a tasting. Uh, somebody told me I don't like Chardonnay. Um, and I brought a Chablis. Now, ah. Chablis, is, Chablis is, it's made from Chardonnay grapes, but the thing about it's different. different. The thing, but but, it, but it, it's, it, it's one of those things where yeah. people go, they don't realize what a Chablis is. Right. And that's the fun with, you know, I know this, and there's some people who don't know this, and then I sort of go, well, there you go. You do actually yeah. like. Yeah. Me. I love Chardonnay. Yeah. <laughs> I think it suffered, you know, it suffered through um, some of the largesse of the uh, early 2000s. I think with a lot of new world Chardonnays coming in, I think people have had their fill. But now this is interesting that you're kind of re-educating them and actually there's nothing wrong with Chardonnay. It's, yeah. it's, it's sort of how it's put together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's And that's the beauty of what's also so beautiful. If you do go a bit more in depth, um, then they, what's in the bottle is what a winemaker wants to express. Because oh. it's, you know, uh, at the end of the day, that's what the, I mean, there's so much to wine and you could talk about a bottle and all of that for hours, but it's sort of, um, it's not just something that somebody wants to make and sell, uh, you know, in some certain parts of Italy and Bordeaux, there's passion, there's love, there's romance, there's really more to it than just something you drink. That's a very nice way of putting it, Floris, about the thought, um, I hadn't really thought about that before. Yeah, it's not like to... a musician's album or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> something they're trying to express. Yeah. yeah. About the soil, about the grape. Yeah. And, and yeah. It's, it's, uh, that's the thing for me. It, it's so, so much more. It, it's love. It's romance. Mm. That's what. So does that mean that um, depending on the wine that you're serving, you're, you're thinking about how to serve it in a particular way in order to kind of create that? Uh, expression if you like well I mean definitely for yeah. ex especially now that it's summer it's sort of um, if I plan a tasting now I don't I'm not going to bring in, in any really any red wines or any heavy reds because in the winter you're going to have a, a tasting which is a bit more a bit warmer you're going to have wines that are a bit warmer but now you're going to want wines that are a bit more zesty refreshing mm. crisp uh, because that's what you drink with this Natural, weather yeah. you, you know you, you're not really going to enjoy a a Saint Million or Barolo with this weather because it's just sort of, I mean, with a barbecue might be great, but still you want something that's just a bit more easygoing. Easygoing, exactly. Yeah. So I, I ensure that I, I don't just look at the individual, I look at the time of year, I look at the, the big picture so that I don't just, be, again, it's a service okay. and it's something I enjoy doing. So talk us through um, one of your home tastings. How does it work? Well, um, you know, how many guests are, are you happy to? I mean, I've done. I mean, I've I've done tastings. Usually, it starts with around six people. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done a tasting. This wasn't really now. I'm tasting. I did a tasting for uh, sixty to seventy people last year. That was for a business. Wow. And of course, then I had a bit of help as well. I was going to say <laughs> um, a lot of logistics. And there. depending on the group, it's sort of. Um, I also, of course, with wine, you start light and you go to. You start with. You know, my one of my last tastings was. We started with, uh, I always start with the bubble. You want to no. cleanse, cleanse the palate. Uh -huh. yeah. um, and then you sort of, you start with a fresh wine you, and then you sort of slowly build your way up from a bubble to whites to rosé to a red, uh, depending on what they want. Yeah. Um, and one of the things I also do as well is sort of to, again, the no, the no frills, the no bullshit. I, all of my bottles are wrapped in uh, either, I use aluminum foil or uh, paper because I don't want people to judge. Yes. Because we live in a world where we judge, mm -hmm. and so many people judge yes. a book by its cover, but also a wine by its label. Yeah. And that way people don't actually know what they're tasting. So at the, only at the end of the tasting, that's when the big reveal is. Because again, I like to take away that judgment, and it's sort of a bit of a... It's both the reveal factor and sort of the bit of, a bit of fun yeah, control. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's sort exciting. of like, because that way people are focusing on just what's in the glass. Yeah. And they're not going, ooh, that, I don't like the look of that label. And they might already have a preconceived... Preconception about... Preconception yeah, about what they're world, tasting. World, world, world. So just sort of, yeah, keeping it fun, keeping it lighthearted. Uh, there's no pace to my tasting. I always try to read the crowd and see what the, when they're ready yeah. for the next yeah. glass. I guess they could be doing it just for... Uh, I don't know, a random social event or maybe a birthday or a reunion or yeah. any reason. Do you see any kind of common themes? Um, most of all, just people who want to get together, get together. And, have, <laughs> and have fun. And, and it, it's the social aspect as yeah. well. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not much more than... Because again, I, I keep it simple. I don't... 
you can that's a great thing uh, wherever you want me to come to a wine tasting, I'm more than happy to do it. And you get to go to people's houses. I love that. Yeah. Visiting people's houses <laughs> it's, it's all great. over Amsterdam. Yeah, it's uh, it's great to see, just explore and go everywhere. Yeah. Do you go on a bike? Uh, yeah, I go on my bike, yeah, because I've got a basket on the front. My yeah. wine's going there. Yeah. Um, I, one thing, though, the guests, I always ensure that the guests have glasses at their house. Yeah. Yeah. Those are a little yeah. bit trickier to transport, but I go with uh, tools. Sometimes I bring uh, notepads for people to take notes on depending on mm. what they're after as well. So you've obviously not been able to do that for the last couple of months, um, and we're coming out of it now. And um, so how have you survived, <laughs> and uh, and how are things looking for you coming forward? Um, well, uh, what, what, what's been keeping me busy is another project, as I briefly mentioned, not, not that interesting for the show, but uh, at the end of last year, purchased a house, did a whole renovation, and um, was able to keep myself busy and occupied with that. Oh. Um, and now, um, throughout the throughout the whole Corona, I, I got orders still from uh, clients who I had done tastings for in the past. So that kept me going. And um, in the meanwhile, time I've, I also joined forces with a wine shop, um, helping them uh, run the shop. And uh, I'm also I'm, I'm a freelancer, so I, I work for various. Uh, bars and restaurants wow and yeah it is good yeah. and congratulations on finding a place to live in Amsterdam it's not an easy thing no uh, but that's great Podcast Amsterdam. we're back with Floris de Maya from Your Wine Guy and we've been talking about the home wine tastings that you do and stuff and uh, how does that work with the coronavirus measures it's still possible um, I mean I've, I've I've got a tasting coming up next week and um, it's 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 up to the client at the end of the day and sort of if they feel comfortable having me and guests at their house, yeah. um, then it's all a matter of being safe. And of course, you know, you go to a bar restaurant here now, there is a bit of a health check. Um, and I suppose I, you know, I, I make sure that I'm healthy and I would ask the guests yeah. or the host, hey, make sure all of your guests are healthy as well. Um, so it's sort of a, it's, it's sort of how to say, how safe do you feel yes. doing, yes. Uh, doing a tasting at other people's houses yeah. and having people over to your house yeah yes. but so far uh you haven't felt compromised no no i mean in when it was sort of the intelligent lockdown yes but up until now as things are slow picking pick up picking up again yeah hasn't been an issue yeah. so we touched on earlier the fact that you are collaborating with capriccio cafe and doing a wine club yeah there so can you tell us a little bit more about that uh, so the idea behind the Capriccio Wine Club is sort of, uh, it's a few things, mainly if um, if you don't want to or you don't have time to do an at-home wine tasting. Um, oh, we don't know anybody. We don't know anybody. <laughs> That's it's a, me. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great place for whether you're a novice, where, whether you're an expert in wine, it's a great place to come together and uh, do, a, do a tasting in both. We're still figuring out if we're going to do online only or if we're going to, as restrictions ease, go back to doing uh, the tastings at Capriccio Wine Club itself. Okay. Um, and that's also still doable and possible with uh, social distancing. Then there's a, there's a terrace space outside. We have plenty of space inside. And it's a, again, it's a space where, much like an at-home wine tasting, we do our tastings. Uh, we allow you to get familiar with wines. Uh, the, the added benefit of uh, doing it at Capriccio Cafe you also get to taste some of uh, Aaron's delicious cooking. Yeah. Ooh, yes. Because then there will be, a, there will That's also, a we'll incorporate pairing with um, the wines as well. And really it's sort of, it's, it's, a, it's a place to meet people. It's a place to get familiar with wines. And of course, what, really, what we really focus on both for the Capriccio Wine Club and my at-home tastings, um, we also do the added part of delivery, making sure if you want to uh, enjoy these wines at home, we bring yeah. those to your house as well. Fantastic. Shout out to Aaron at the Capriccio Cafe. Um, uh, Floris, for our listeners who don't know where that is or what kind of place it is, could you tell them a bit more about it? Capriccio Cafe is a Mediterranean-style cafe. Uh, a little bit about Capriccio. Uh, the definition of Capriccio is Portuguese slash Spanish for on a whim. Oh. Yeah. Um, and that was what, what Aaron's sort of idea was when he was like... You know, he was going to go work at another restaurant. And then all of a sudden he was like, you know what? I'm just going <laughs> to, on a whim, start Open Capriccio, start Capriccio Cafe. Wow, uh, and awesome. it's delicious uh, Mediterranean style food. Aaron is also just, uh, Aaron loves, he, he's a pasta aficionado. Oh, and he's just created his own pasta cookbook as well. 
Oh, oh yes, I saw that. It's, it's, it's like a coloring book as yeah. well. So we'll have to talk about that some other time yeah. as well. It's great. But so, and uh, it's on Yeye Kramer Plain. So it's, uh, if you're, uh, it's near the end of the Overtome, uh, before the bridge, take a right. Um, and uh, Aaron will welcome you with his yes. uh, delicious cooking. Yeah. Yes. And a cute little doggy. Place. Yeah. Papacito. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and then also, real quick, um, yeah. I mean, uh, for you two ladies, I've brought uh, two different Ooh, wines. Kathy. Um, so <laughs> first of all, we have a Vino Verde from the Mino region. Uh, it's a very, very, it's made from uh, Azal and Arinto grapes. It's a very uh, light, uh, refreshing white wine. Um, is that from Portugal then? I think from, I remember is, yeah, the name from Portugal. This is from Portugal. Vino Verde is in the north of uh, Portugal. And Vino Verde means um, green wines yes. because it, the, the region is known for very fresh whites. And then from Spain, we have a Dardel. And so this is made from uh, Garnacha Blanca. So it's Garnacha, which is usually mm. a red wine grape and uh, Viognier. So as a result of this, Ooh. the Viognier gives it a, it makes it very aromatic, um, a little bit flowery. Then the Garnacha gives it a bit of red fruit notes as well. Mm. So uh, really interesting. Just two perfect uh, summer wines. Well, thank you very much. For you That's to very try. well. Lovely. Yeah. Why Look forward gonna... to having a little tip Yeah, when that. are we going to have them? Yeah. It's great. For this. Thank you very That's much. That's very Morris. kind of you. Thank of you, Boris. I think we have to have them together because I want to try both. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you now, we now, can make that happen. Now you can already do your own little at home tasting already. Yes. Do you know what? Gilly's just moved house. So this is an excuse for you to invite me <laughs> well, over. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. You go. I'm glad uh, <laughs> that's what your wine guy's here for. Uh, don't touch them until I'm there. <laughs> yeah. They've got cool. your name on, Kathy. Yeah. Don't worry. Thank you, Boris. Yeah. <laughs> and, we'll, and then we'll report back to you and tell you what we thought. Yeah. Great. Right. Yeah. Great. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, do you get to um, visit the wineries themselves as part of your, in your role as wine expert? Uh, I'm slowly. Uh, that that is a dream one day to get to there. Uh, I do love to travel to Italy. Is my favorite wine country. Ah. Um, at the moment, where I source all of my wines from is I work together with various importers in Amsterdam, mainly independent in- importers. Uh, as a result of that, I'm starting to my sort of my uh, network. My network is growing yeah. every day, and that also means I'm not getting to a point where if I see a wine at a bar or at a restaurant, I'm starting to get to hey, I know where that wine who's imported that wine. Great, and that's sort of I guess part of what if if I could talk about a grand vision, your wine guy could be sort of like if if somebody comes to me and is like, hey, I'm looking for this specific wine that I can very quickly know exactly where mm. to find that wine. And that'll help people source that wine as well. Fantastic. Totally, I have that sometimes. I went to a wedding in the France, in south of France. I uh, can't remember the region, the Jura region. Mm. and had the most brilliant wine at the wedding. And I'm trying to find a supplier here. It's, you're the guy. You're my <laughs> wine guy. Exactly. Tourist. Although, Perfect. fun fact about the French and both the both Italians, there's sometimes they, they, they produce a, a beautiful wine gets produced and they're just sort of, you know, this wine is so good, we don't, we'd rather just not export yes. it. Yes. And they don't actually, they don't, it's not sold That's anywhere so else. That's so true. You, I have a friend who, who loves this certain uh, style of Bordeaux wine, but the guy has made offers to the winemaker, I'll, I'll buy pallets, I'll buy cases, yes. but the wine is like, no, I don't, I don't need to, I don't need yeah. it to be exported. Oh, tricky. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's understandable, I suppose. And is this a situation sometimes with some wines that they you get an exclusive deal, like a wine supplier, like I'm the only person who can import this wine in the Netherlands? Is that? There are, there are, um, I mean, that's the thing. That's how a lot of, it's, part of the, it's a bit of a shame. I know a few independent importers, they start, they have this really great wine. And then um, a large scale importer buys that over. And then it sort of becomes not any more exclusive, but it's sort of, because a lot of these independent winemakers, they build these relationships with all these winemakers. And then, of course, the winemaker is like, hey, I, get a, I guess if um, I've got a bigger importer who can buy more wine, mm-hmm. they'd rather... And they don't go. need them anymore. And, and, and yeah. that's sort of a shame because it's, I think anybody who works in wine, it, it's, it's passion. And, uh, yeah. um, but then again, those, those importers don't give up and then they keep trying to find and source new wines as well. Yeah, and, and there's always going to be, I guess, uh, a new producer somewhere who's looking for an outlet and, and so it's kind of feeds itself to some extent. There's, I it reminds it. me of that another analogy of the music industry. Yeah, yeah, someone's getting independent artists and then they go on to the big time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Commercialising. I don't know. Yeah, so, um, Florence, I wanted to ask you, because 
why i mean it's huge wine is just a huge area yeah. that you know every, almost every country in the world is producing wine like do you have to do some kind of memory training <laughs> or do you just have a fantastic brain that manages to catalog everything and uh, so you you know you can pinpoint exactly the wine or a country or producer a style as soon as you are prompted to think of it do you know what i mean do you have tricks to help you <laughs> oh dear I floored you <laughs> oh dear indeed floored florist <laughs> um it's just I guess you've stopped me there. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. But, I didn't mean no, to do but that. no, no, that, that's good. But it's, I think it comes like a large part of my knowledge is sort of, it's both reading. It's, uh, it's about how I take in the information and mm. it sort of, I guess a large part of it is memory. I do have things. I, I remember the most random of things and it's sort of, uh, it's both memory, but also just practice and sort of tasting and, and complete when I, immersion. I and when I see a wine, I sort of, I don't just, I, I do my, I sort of, if a wine really interests me, I'll go read up on it. I'll do some research and then I'll yeah. figure out, okay, mm -hmm. where is this from? What's the region? Why does it have this flavor or that flavor or who made it? Because it's sort of by doing that little, and yeah. bit, I guess it's also a bit of memory association because um, wine has flavor, it yeah. has taste, it has smell. Um, and by, you know, sometimes I will taste or smell a, a taste or smell a wine back and it'll bring me back to a wine I've tasted before. It's and powerful. it's, it's, uh, yeah. so I guess it's, it's smell and taste association is probably a large part of it, which then comes in terms yeah. with my, in, the knowledge that and you've, you've that been I researching have. and you've done some homework on it. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, I think. For speaking with you now, uh, it's so obvious that you're fluent in you know, your subject in wine, and it's just a pleasure to listen to you uh, <laughs> and hear. So it, it's nice, a natural talent in that. Yeah, well done, you. Mama Maya, <laughs> Mama de Maya. Uh, but and for also for our listeners uh, who've been listening, like um, how can they find you if they want to have a wine tasting or follow up on some of these ideas? The best way to simply reach me is uh, I don't have a website because it's uh, I'm simply on Instagram, so it's your underscore wine guy, and you can um, you can uh, follow my wine diaries, which I've uh, started producing uh, little little tidbits about wines that I taste and review myself. And yeah, the best way to reach me is simply through uh, a direct message on Instagram. Yeah. Yes, Instagram, everyone. We've got also a link on that on our post for the show, the radio show, a link to Floris's uh, Instagram, which is your underscore wine guy. guy. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us on yes, the show and uh, and for the wine, of course. Yeah, I look forward to it. We always like people who bring, <laughs> come bearing gifts. Yeah. Uh, Shame is there anything? Is there anything coming up that you want to share with anyone before you go? Um, we'll be um, so uh, make sure to also check out Capriccio Cafe yeah. because that's where the information will be released. As we're still working out a date for restrictions because even though we wanted to do an online tasting, we're just sort of. In July, we'll be doing, uh, we'll be hosting our first um, tasting at Capriccio Cafe as well. Oh, well, heads up in July. Oh, yes. So we haven't got the date yet, but yeah, because be we're July. just sort of yeah. still negotiating restrictions, the seeing what's best. But yeah. July, uh, and then every month, every once a month, there will be a wine tasting hosted at Capriccio Cafe. Fantastic. Yeah. Great. That's one to watch. I, well, we'll, we'll uh, report it here too once we get those dates. Yeah. Great. So yeah. thank you, Floris. Really nice to meet you. Thanks again for the wine. And uh, we wish you all the best going forward. Yeah, we'll look out for you on your bike with a basket yes. full of wine <laughs> on your way to some lucky people. Thank you for having me. Amsterdam, Amsterdam Kitchen. Kitchen. Join us live on Saturday mornings. From 10 till 12. On Broadcast Amsterdam. We'll catch up later. It's all online. Broadcast Amsterdam, your local radio station, 24-7 and on demand. Or on broadcastamsterdam.nl.